Good morning. Good Thank morning. you for uh, joining us for the September episode of Stop Diabetes Insight. I'm Beth Grant. I'm Carol is... Dixon. I'm Senior Manager of Mission Delivery with the American Diabetes Association. We hope you all had a great, wonderful Labor Day weekend and are all rested and ready to go for the week. You know we are. <laughs> we have a lot of stuff on our plate right now. Um, September, we have a lot of events going into fall. So, um, you know, let's talk about some of the events that we have upcoming in the state of Indiana here. Uh, our first event, September 19th, is our Step Out Walk to Stop Diabetes. Uh, this is one of our signature fundraising events. It's at uh, the Celebration Plaza in downtown Indianapolis, which is right outside of the NCAA building. And this year we have a new route. So this will be exciting, um, trying a different route going behind the zoo. So I think it'll be a really fun day. Uh, with this day, we also have a lot of uh, entertainment and we do a lot of um, building up those people that, you know, are walking for us that are living with diabetes and we call these people Red Striders and they're very important to mm -hmm. us and um, they do a lot of fantastic things throughout the year. Um, another special group, Carol, you have a camper team, yes, don't you? Yes, we do. We have our Camp John Warble team and we're going to be having a camp reunion at Oh, Walk. that's great. So we'll have um, campers that will come back with their families and, and they can reconnect because some of our campers live from one end of the state to the next. And so they'll come back to our walk and they'll reconnect and talk to each other and some staff will come back and we may have some YMCA staff with us this year. We'll have That's games fun. and activities going on in that area. So yeah, it's, it's a great area, great fun time. Very good. We also offer a um, kids area and we have um, another special entertainer, Silly Safaris. They've been with us for quite a few yeah. years this year, so they will bring some really cool exotic animals uh, and entertain the children too. Um, and I'm lots good of... until they, if, unless they bring out a spider or a snake, <laughs> I'm like, back off, Big but I like the little or... fuzzy ones. Right, yeah, uh, <laughs> they had some really fun rabbits and stuff yes. last year, and they had some fun Turtles races, so. And, yeah. Yeah, so it was a good time. So we look forward to seeing you guys at Saturday, September the 19th. If you would like to register, there is still time. Um, that website is diabetes.org forward slash IndieWalk. And again, if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to call us um, or contact us at the office. Well, you know, one thing that we could point out to our audience is that because a lot of, because you are watching online, we don't know where you live and you may not live conveniently to the Indianapolis area, but you can join us for the walk as a virtual walker. Correct. So you can go on and um, to the diabetes.org slash indie walk site and learn to be a virtual walker with us. That is, that's a really good point. Thanks, Carol. And then another great event that we have coming up in September is our Ask the Experts uh, session. And this one this year is up in Lafayette, Indiana. Um, it will be Tuesday, September the 22nd. So, Carol, let's talk a little bit okay. about um, some of the experts that are going to be there this year. So our moderator this year will be Dr. Shannon Oates. She's an endocrinologist, and um, people up in Lafayette just love her. And she's great. busy all the time, and she's a ball of fire, so she's going to be a great moderator. Um, we will have a dentist, ophthalmologist, cardiologist, podiatrist, nephrologist, internal medicine. Um, so we, are, we have... Um, Physicians re uh, representing all the different areas that someone with diabetes might be in contact with. And it's a free two-hour event where people can just come and ask all the questions they want. We have them write down their questions if they don't want to raise their hand and ask in person. That's good. Um, so that's what the moderator will do. She'll go through okay, those. Great. But people are also free just to ask anything they might want to as, as the evening goes on. So it's a great way for people to have some kind of one-on-one -on -one time almost with specialists, and they don't have to go pay a copay. They don't have to do any of that. They can just come right. and learn. And we continue to say, bring your questions with right. you. You know, if there's something that comes to mind before the event, um, even while you're there at the event, which is what Carol said, you know, exactly. they'll pass the microphone, and you can, you know, have that free opportunity to speak to experts of all areas. So that's it's right. a really, really unique opportunity. It's good whether you have type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or if you struggle with gestational diabetes. Right. Any or if you're those. a caretaker. Or if you're a caretaker, right? We're absolutely. Too. Okay. We have a lot of caregivers that will come um, because they've just got questions. You know, they're not sure exactly what to do for mom and dad. Right. Um, or maybe mom and dad doesn't want to, they don't want to take their medicine or something, you know, and so they've got experts here that they can talk to about that. Good. 
That's fantastic. And again, um, that date is Tuesday, September 22nd. Uh, you can register online for that. Just visit our homepage. It's diabetes.org slash Indiana. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see our calendaring events. So you just select that and you can get the information online. Right. It's, I don't know if we mentioned it's going to be at the Ivy Tech Community College on Creasy Lane. Then in November, uh, which November is American Diabetes Month, so throughout the month of November, we will have some events that are going on. You know, we're working for, um, you know, just educating the general public and talking about um, the topic for this year is again America gets cooking. So just you know, again, watch our Twitter feed, and I'm sure that in October and again in November we'll have some more information about events that are coming up. But our signature event that's happening in November is our gala event. This year it is the Under the Big Top, Taming the Diabetes Beast. Um, this is the Josiah Kirby Lilly Senior Distinguished Service Award Gala. We're telling everyone to save the date. It's uh, the first Saturday in November. It's November 7th. And, uh, you know, as we've done in the past 26 years, it's at the Indiana Roof Ballroom. It's a very exciting night. So if you are looking for tickets or if you would like to be a sponsor for this event, you can contact Judy Williams. This is her email here. It's juwilliams at diabetes.org. And again, she's your contact for tickets and for um, sponsorship ideas. Um, or if you would like to be a sponsor, um, you know, we're still kind of looking for uh, gala of auction, auction items. items. Yes, yes we, we have a silent and we have a live auction. So right. if you have anything unique, if you have a unique business, if you're making jewelry, if you're an artist, it, mm -hmm. it crosses the board. So, um, you know, those live auction items, if you have a timeshare somewhere and would be willing to donate that, you know, that's a fantastic opportunity, right. um, not only for the ADA to, again, fundraise um, for a cure. So, Maybe we should explain why it's a service gala, why it's a distinguished service gala. Yes. Um, so the recipient this year is um, Dr. Edelman. And um, you can talk a little bit about maybe why we chose to, um, to use our gala in this manner. Right. We are the only gala of, of all the American Diabetes Association's gala that provides an award to someone national or international who has made great strides in the field of diabetes, whether it's through research, um, advocacy, or education. And so this year's winner is Dr. Stephen Edelman, who um, runs uh, T-Coid, um, Taking Care of Your Diabetes. I never can say <laughs> the acronym right. Right. Um, but he is our winner, and the reason it's called the J.K. Lilly Award is because um, J.K. Lilly was the one at the helm of Lilly when insulin was discovered, and he was the one that figured out how to get it out to the masses of people. And so that's why this um, gala is named in his honor. So we honor him, and um, it is a national award, as we talked about. Right. So, and obviously know. with the theme this year, it's going to be fun. Yes, fun. lots of fun. Um, we are kind of known as the most fun gala that's out there. Right. So again, we so encourage we you to get involved. So we have our serious side with the award, but then it's all fun. So right, please come. Please come, enjoy, and we do also uh, have live music at the event also. Um, then closing out, not really closing out November, but mid-November, this is a new initiative for the American Diabetes Association, the National Healthy Lunch Day. Uh, November 17th, we're asking people to, um, you know, take part in the National Healthy Lunch. And again, we'll be doing a few things. Um, we've got some things that we're working on, um, trying to work with some local dietitians, and again, right. just spread some information and talk to people Creating about the importance of exactly yes. um, so if you're looking for more information you can contact Carol um, her email is listed on the slide C Dixon at diabetes.org um, and I think that's probably about it uh, we will return with our special guest dr. Shannon Rishishauer and today's topic is going to be diabetes and Alzheimer's and what are the connections we'll be right back You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. 
Well, we sold the old beauty, and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret. Only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wathard Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. And we are really excited to get on with this second segment of our show today. We have with us Dr. Shannon Rishishauer. I uh, don't think I quite pronounced that correctly. I'm having trouble. Um, but if you could talk to us a little bit about what you do and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, I'm an assistant research professor at the Indiana University School of Medicine. Um, I'm also part of the Indiana Alzheimer's Disease Center. I do most of my research on imaging, neuroimaging, and, and using neuroimaging tools as measures to detect Alzheimer's disease early in the stage, uh, ideally before people actually show symptoms. Very interesting. Alzheimer's is a very interesting topic, yeah. and we're going to find out more. And I, you know, I think a lot of our audience maybe does not realize that there is a connection between diabetes and mm -hmm. Alzheimer's. So we want to explore that a little bit more right now. So your first slide. Uh, let's see. Maybe use, there we go. Your first slide is a great illustration between normal neurons in, in a person living with Alzheimer's. Can you explain a bit further? So this figure um, shows the two major pathologies that are associated with Alzheimer's disease. These are found in the, in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's. Um, the first thing that's illustrated are the amyloid plaques, which are a sticky substance that builds up outside of the major cells in the brain, the neurons. Um, and these plaques sort of fill in, ga fill in between and they cause problems with the way the neurons communicate with one another. What um, causes the plaques to develop? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, there's a lot of theories on that. There's essentially a protein that normal, that's normally in the brain gets processed in, a, in the wrong way. Um, and the, the more and more that that happens, these plaques start to come together. And that's called the amyloid beta protein. Okay. Um, nobody exactly knows why it starts. Okay. Um, there are probably some genetic factors that make you more susceptible to getting these plaques. Um, but, you know, researchers are still working on what causes this to happen. When did Alzheimer's first get its name? So, the, it, Alzheimer's is named after Alois Alzheimer, who was a researcher in the 1900s or so, um, who first described this disease. Um, he actually saw a, a relatively young woman, uh, she was in her probably 50s when she died, um, who had the symptoms of dementia, um, which they really didn't know what that was at that time. Um, but then when he looked at her brain on autopsy, um, this is what he saw, which okay. was the amyloid plaques and these neurofibrillary tangles, which are inside the neurons. Um, and they cause the sort of processes within the neurons to tangle up and then the neurons die. So explain to us a little bit about the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. 
So Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. Um, dementia really describes the symptoms, which is cognitive impairments, sometimes personality changes, and there are a number of different types. Um, Alzheimer's is the most common. Um, it's caused by these plaques and tangles, but there are other types of dementia. Vascular dementia, which is caused by changes in the vascular system in the brain. Uh, frontotemporal dementia, which actually causes more personality changes. Um, but Alzheimer's disease is by far the most common type. Okay. Well, now let's talk about the connection between Alzheimer's and diabetes. So people with diabetes are much more likely to get Alzheimer's disease and vice versa. People with Alzheimer's disease are much more likely to be diabetic. Um, and there's a number of theories as to why this may be the case. Um, but studies in animal models of Alzheimer's disease and in humans have shown that low insulin in the brain actually causes an increase in the amount of amyloid plaques that accumulate as well as an increase in the, in the amount of tau, which are the two hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. And this is likely through their processing is actually somewhat controlled by insulin, so the absence, it actually causes abnormal processing of these proteins. Um, as in the periphery, there are problems with people with diabetes in their vascular system. They have vascular damage that occurs in the brain, just the same as in the periphery. Um, and this can cause problems that lead to Alzheimer's, as well as problems that lead to vascular dementia. Um, and then finally, uh, hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia have both been shown to cause poorer cognition. People who have hyperglycemia or hyperglycemia, uh, hypoglycemia mm -hmm. tend to have poorer cognition, which is directly linked to those conditions. Okay. So I have heard the term um, Alzheimer's and type 3 diabetes. Yeah. So some people call Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes. Um, part of Alzheimer's is a um, change in the way the brain uses glucose. So the you know, the, the me metabolism of glucose in the brain is very complex. And as changes in glucose levels, insulin levels in the brain change, there can be damage to the neurons and death of the neurons due to this glucose dysregulation. Um, and so people, some researchers believe that, that Alzheimer's disease is another type of diabetes that's specific to the brain. That's so interesting. And, you know, when we are doing our education programs and we talk about all the various complications that occur from diabetes, we tell people it can literally happen from head to toe. Mm -hmm. And so that's, um, it's very interesting for people to know about that. Um, what kind of lifestyle activities would help to potentially prevent diabetes and Alzheimer's? Well, so like many things, um, having a healthy diet, has been shown to be very important for pr protecting you from Alzheimer's disease. Um, low amounts of processed sugar, um, high omega-3 fatty acids like that found in fish um, are, have been shown to be preventative for developing mm -hmm. Alzheimer's disease. You know, a lot of people will say what's good for the heart is good for the brain. So regular exercise. Um, and specific to Alzheimer's disease, although probably for a healthy life in general, is to be socially and cognitively active. So things like doing crossword puzzles, going out and visiting your friends, yes. um, playing bridge, playing cards. Those are things that keep people engaged and can protect them from the cognitive impairment that leads to Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so um, maybe always uh, having a smartphone in front of you and doing something <laughs> might not be all bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably not. people in my age group as we get older. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's important to get out and to talk to people. Right. I mean, uh, getting out of your house, going and visiting with people, you know, that's active physically, right. it's active mentally, and it keeps you engaged with people, which I, I think can be protective against Alzheimer's disease, the more that you're engaged with other people. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we will be right back. We have more to discuss on this topic, and we'll be back after these messages. Thank you. You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. 
but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret. Only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wofford Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. Welcome back, and we're going to continue our discussion on Alzheimer's and diabetes. And so, tell us a little bit about um, Alzheimer's disease detection. So, this is a, an area that um, I do a lot of work. Um, so, neuroimaging, which is imaging the brain, um, can be used to detect Alzheimer's disease and Alzheimer's like pathology early in the disease course. Um, about 10 years ago, um, a little bit more now, um, some scientists developed a way to see amyloid um, in the living person, which was the first time that was really something that you could actually see on a brain scan. Um, through a technique called PET imaging, um, they were able to show that you can see all, uh, amyloid plaques in the brain. And some subsequent research showed that older adults who even who are cognitively healthy about a quarter of them show amyloid in their brains so the suggestion was that maybe these people might be at risk and that this amyloid is accumulating well before they actually have their cognitive symptoms okay so the ultimately these tools became FDA approved um, for use in people with Alzheimer's to help diagnose Alzheimer's. But research is going on to try to determine whether or not we can detect it more uh, you know, earlier in the disease course, because many people believe that's where we're going to have the most effective treatment, is right. to actually prevent Alzheimer's from happening, not so much treat it once it's there. Right. So what determines whether or not someone should have one of these tests? So often what they'll do um, is for people who have what's called mild cognitive impairment, which is um, when you start to have memory or cognitive symptoms, but you're not demented. You're able to mostly function normally. Um, you may have difficulty with complex cognitive tasks, but you can still day to day do fine. Um, and particularly if, if there's some confusion about your symptoms, whether you know they're not all memory related, um, they'll do one of these scans um, and it will help inform the doctor whether or not the person likely has Alzheimer's disease and will progress to Alzheimer's or if there's an absence of amyloid they'll start looking for other causes um, things like vascular dementia or being on a medication that's causing these side effects okay so what about in someone who thinks well you know this is just my normal state of aging, and they don't really mm -hmm. mention it to their doctor. Has there been any discussion of making such um, a test be part of our natural routine as we get older? You know, we have to have a colonoscopy, we right. have to have, you know, these different tests. Um, people are talking about it, probably not the PET scans. Um, these involve uh, injection of radioactive material, um, which a lot of people maybe wouldn't want. It's actually quite safe, but it's very expensive 
Um, and it's really only used when needed. Um, it's not a screening tool, probably. Um, number of researchers are looking for screening tools, uh, whether it be a blood test, some other type of test that would indicate that you're at high risk, so maybe you should go get mm -hmm. one of these PET scans. These likely won't be the first line screening tools, but okay. these will be things that, if indicated you might have some risk, then you would go get it. Okay, all right. Um, can you explain the anti-amyloid therapies and um, some of the um, intranasal insulin therapies? Yeah, so there are a lot of therapies that are under um, investigation for Alzheimer's disease. Um, recently at a national or international conference, um, there was some very exciting news that some of these anti-amyloid therapies may be um, actually starting to work. So they're basically, they're testing these in people who are cognitively normal, but who show up as having amyloid on these PET scans. Um, and the idea would be that if you take that amyloid out of the brain using one of these anti-amyloid therapies, um, that you would then be able to prevent Alzheimer's in the future. Um, Eli Lilly is running two trials of their uh, drug that does this, mm -hmm. and there was some very, um, very good news that the initial reports say that this is going to be effective. However, there's many more years that we're going to have to follow these people because typically um, having amyloid in the brain to the time where you actually have Alzheimer's is probably a, a decade. Okay. So really we would have to follow people five to ten years to really get an idea of whether or not this is effective. Right. Um, the intranasal uh, in insulin is something that's been um, tried and is still under investigation for Alzheimer's disease. They've shown that uh, intranasal insulin can improve cognition, um, which gets back to this idea of Alzheimer's being this type 3 diabetes, right. which is by upping the insulin that's available in the brain for you know, cell regeneration, um, memory processing, it's actually improving the way people uh, function on a day-to-day -day basis. So this may be something that would be more effective as a therapeutic treatment once you actually have the cognitive symptoms, whereas these anti-amyloid therapies would be more for when you, before you have the symptoms. Okay. What are some difficulties in managing diabetes if someone already is showing signs of cognitive impairment? Well, it, you know, people with cognitive impairment may have difficulty remembering to take their medications, um, remembering uh, the lifestyle types of things that they, they need to do in order to manage their diabetes or to check effectively. Their glucose check or their glucose, did I do it or not? Mm -hmm. Um, which is why I think, you know, doctors and caregivers who have somebody with cognitive impairment and diabetes have to be particularly cognizant of the impact that cognitive impairment can have on proper management of diabetes. Um, you know, you've got to make sure that the people are regularly taking their medication, regularly checking their glucose, um, because they may report that they did, but they're not sure. They're right. not, they don't really remember. Are there any connections with A1C levels? Yeah, Can so we, uh, they, there's been studies to show that A1C levels are linked to cognitive performance, um, that they do have a link to having, you know, to likelihood of progressing to Alzheimer's disease or cognitive impairment, um, and that, you know, normalizing these levels can actually um, improve cognition. I know that there are some diabetes uh, research studies going on here mm -hmm. in Indianapolis that um, they've been recruiting for people to come and be part of their studies. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything like that? Yeah, so the Indiana Alzheimer Disease Center, we run a number of studies um, on Alzheimer's disease, on early detection of Alzheimer's disease. Um, we There's a lot of different studies. There's drug trials that we're involved with. There's um, observational studies for people who are just cognitively healthy and they just want to help, or for people who have symptoms. Um, I have some work on uh, sensory biomarkers for Alzheimer's disease, okay. vision, smell. So we're testing those as these potential screening tools. Okay. Um, but there's all kinds of studies. If you go to the Indiana Alzheimer's disease website, um, we have a number of different studies that are, you know, might 
be something that you're interested in. The other thing would be the Alzheimer's Association web website. They have a lot of information about different types of studies, not just at Indiana University, but other places in the state, different types of drug trials. Um, so that would be a good place to get information. Okay. And their website, I believe, is just alz.org, yes. correct? So that's very yeah. easy to remember, alz.org. Um, and then we have Dr. Richtauer's, um information on the screen as well. If you want to contact her, is it okay for people to contact yes. you directly? Yep. Okay. And, of course, if you need more information, you can always contact us in our office at 317-352-9226. And I think that will do it for today. Well, um, for we're going to wrap me. up our show. We hope to see everyone at our walk on September the 19th. And remember, audience out there, if you have questions you want us to discuss on here, please send us an email or give us a call. And we have to give a shout out to our famous Mr. Jim Wofford. I only wish we could turn the camera to him, <laughs> but he's the one that allows us to do this show for you every month, and we certainly appreciate his efforts and his support with us. So thank you, everyone, and have a great week.